Welcome to Keep On Casting. We decided to come hunting this weekend, had some nice cold weather pushing through. We thought the bucks might move. We have had a kind of weird rut this year. I call it a trickle rut. It never really turned on full. It just kind of spotty here, spotty there. So we decided that maybe we might be able to catch a buck chasing those does this weekend. So stay tuned for a great episode. Keep On Casting is sponsored by Bronco Industries, leading the field in industrial construction and fabrication. Real Outfitters, proud to be the first family-owned tackle store in Thibodeau, Louisiana. So I grew up deer hunting in North Louisiana, uh, Ruston specifically. We used to hunt days and days without seeing a deer. Over that period of time, we've seen the deer herds increase in North Louisiana. We're seeing a lot more big bucks killed in Lincoln Parish and Union Parish. It's great for Louisiana. I think Louisiana could really have as many deer and as big a deer as Kansas and Missouri, but we put a lot of pressure on the deer. We, uh, we have four months where we legally hunt the deer and um, that puts a, a, a lot of pressure on them. So over time, we've, we've seen our deer herd increase both uh, in South Louisiana and North Louisiana, and a lot of that is management practices. A lot of times in the past, uh, when I grew up, all we would do was shoot bucks. So. Uh, Nothing but bucks, nothing but bucks. You'd have occasional doe day, one or two a year. And now um, we're actually killing more does and that helps the herd um, because it, it has more forage for the bucks when they're there and you're not killing as many bucks. So uh, even though it's uh, counterintuitive and um, it, it's hard to make myself do it, we still need to shoot some does. And if you get a wildlife management guy in there, he'll tell you, you need to take this many does, this many does. And honestly, we're probably not taking enough. Another thing that we see in, in the South is uh, we have such, uh, such abundant cover. I mean, there's pine trees, oak trees, uh, hardwoods, uh, piney woods, and, and these deer, they rut. We don't see it like they do in Kansas. In Kansas, everything's in the open. It's like watching TV. You see those, those bucks chasing does for miles and miles. Uh, you see them corralling the does, but uh, here we don't actually get to see that that often. Um, so this year has, has been really weird. Uh, we hunted earlier in Kansas, and, and like I said, in Kansas they usually have a really hard rut. It's eight, seven, eight days of rut where it's on and nothing stops them. The deer, the bucks just kind of go crazy. Uh, this year it was a, a day here, a day there. They actually started earlier, and I think that's what happened um, here. We've seen a lot of, uh, of bucks on camera in uh, early December and mid-December, and normally it should be the last week of December and the first week of January or around that time. So something's got the deer rut off. I don't know if it's this weather because we've had a lot of, of, of hot, cold, hot, cold, and it never really got really cold where they, they might get into a steady pattern. So when that happens, you just have to get out there and you have to put that, uh, like I say, sit in time uh, and uh, wait for that buck to, to mess up, slip up and cross out in front of you. But uh, this year we did get to see uh, two bucks fighting on, on the hill. So that was pretty cool. Uh, that's the first time I've seen that in Louisiana. Having your own place is also a neat thing. Um, it allows you to develop that place and what we do we try to have areas where there's a lot of cover and they can bed down, but we also have uh, try to have open areas. A lot of times deer like those areas where it's a transition between a cover area and an open area. So they call that, you know, a, a edge area. And uh, we try to plant in the summertime so that they have soybeans and protein in the summer. And then we try to plant a nice winter crop. And I actually protein feed almost year round. Occasionally we'll run out. In the winter time, we'll switch to corn because it's cheaper than protein and just uh, uh, put corn in the feeders uh, mostly because they don't really need uh, as much protein as they do to develop their horns in the early spring and summer. So uh, once again, it's nice to have your own area where you can develop this uh, and uh, hopefully grow some big deer if our neighbors uh, are in agreement. Up 
So uh, this year we did something where we actually thinned the land um, or thin the pine trees and what they do they cut every other row so it allows you to see down these long runs and that's nice right now um, but we really want more under under brush and what that does it allows a lot of sun to get down there to the ground next year we're going to have a lot of underbrush a lot of browse and a lot of cover for those deer also when they do the loading for those big logs they usually clear a, a two or three acres so um, when I get a chance, I'm going to get a bulldozer out here, burn all that, and make that some other food plots. And once again, once again, you're trying to allow for those areas of transition where you have uh, green and you have woods, green and woods, and that's what you want for the deer. And uh, like I said, with a small piece of land like this, we want to make it more attractive um, for deer to stay on this area than, than our neighbors. One of the deer's biggest weapons is their, their nose. They can smell better than a dog. They can smell you uh, sometimes when they're upwind and they just keep, catch a, a swirl of wind going back that way. So we do take precautions. We actually, uh, I, I shower in the morning uh, and I use non-scented soap. I wash my hair and uh, brush my teeth. They say uh, 80 to 90% of a person's smell is from the neck up. So if you can do some things to prevent that, that really helps. So these are some of the things that I use. I don't use a lot of uh, the um, uh, doe and estrus because I, I find that the deer here seem to be alarmed by it. This is a Evercom and this is the deer herd scent that we use. And I'll put that on my boots and on a few little trees around the stand. And this seems to work better than the uh, doe and estrus. Another thing we use is a scent eliminator spray. And this is just one that I had in the back of the buggy. I usually get whatever they have. You usually need to buy it early in the year because they're usually, their stocks are depleted toward the end of the year. And those things do seem to help with the uh, deer's uh, ability to smell. And I, I do find that, that that gives you a little bit of an advantage. But then you have your partner walk out there that has been smoking and drinking all day, who sits in a stand and kills a big buck. That happens too, so who knows. You know Grafton Dermatology as one of Louisiana's premier skin care and skin cancer treatment centers. Grafton Dermatology will bring your beautiful body to its healthy fullest. Grafton Dermatology provides advanced treatment for all skin conditions. Repairing, healing, enhancing. Grafton Dermatology, defining healthier skin and beautiful bodies for over 15 years. La Tour Golf Club, the region's leading residential golfing community, is nestled amid beautiful landscaped greens and peaceful lakes. The 18-hole, 72-par course was designed by PGA Tour champion David Toms. Golfers can enjoy the fully stocked golf pro shop, driving range, and putting greens. The family can also enjoy La Tour Bar and Grill, which offers delicious cuisine. The Bayou region's premier golfing community. Live the life with La Tour. Keep On Casting is sponsored by The Prop Shop. We are more than just props. Spider wire. Nothing gets away. Berkeley. Catch more fish. So the first afternoon we got here, I wanted to hunt the uh, south pipeline. And the pipeline generally runs uh, north and south. And we had five does come out at, at 445 and just feed out there for a long time. We also had three or four uh, does on the hill and we actually had one big deer standing up there that I, I just, it was too far away to see, probably five, 600 yards, and I couldn't see if it had horns, but it looked like a big buck that was just standing out there watching does. It's 445 and the first deer walked out. That's about 380 yards. I'm probably not gonna take a shot that far. The big doe though, there's level minded. See it all in mind. That's just where I'll stop planting. No, there's another one coming up. It's number three. Six. 
everybody has their favorite deer rifle, and I, I think an old 3030. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, a 30 uh, .30-06, uh, shoot that. 270 is a great deer round. I just wanted to say a little bit about this one because it's a, it's a really good gun, low recoil. The kids can shoot it. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a Christensen Arms. Um, extremely accurate. Once again, low recoil. Bo's been shooting this since he was eight years old and has no problem. It only has 14 inches of drop at around 300 yards, 12 to 14 inches of drop. So you can really make some nice long shots with these. These were developed for a uh, long range shooting competition. And since then they've become a really popular hunting round. And I, I really have not had a rifle that has dropped as many deer right where they're standing as this one. Yeah, the uh, 143 Hornadies uh, that I'm shooting, these are called uh, ELD Precision Hunters. Um, and they're actually what they call a ballistic tip. And uh, I've, I've seen where we, uh, little Bo, when he shot that deer, a month ago, uh, you could see the entrance point, but there was uh, six or seven exit wounds. So, so these things go in and they do an incredible amount of damage. The only thing I've seen people say is uh, sometimes if you shoot a really big deer, you don't get an exit wound. So although it kills a deer, you don't see as, as much blood to trail. But um, I've been really, uh, really pleased with these. Uh, once again, a ballistic tip, Hornady 143, 6.5 Creedmoor or 143 grain, 6.5 Creedmoor uh, in the Precision Hunter. And uh, this is, a, this is uh, my favorite uh, deer rifle uh, at this time. On the second morning, we decided to hunt, um, we call it the Redneck Stand, and it actually is made by Redneck Blinds. And um, that's up on a hill where we have three lanes that you can see down approximately 200 yards each. And it's a nice stand, but uh, when we got there, I didn't see as many tracks as I was seeing on the South Pipeline, and also the grass seemed to be a little, the grass seemed to be a little bit higher, and that means that the deer aren't out there feeding quite as much in that area. And I don't know why, if there's a neighbor that moved in, I, I do hear a dog barking out there more or less, but those deer don't seem to pay that much attention to the dogs. But anyway, we put feed out uh, the day before, and we could tell that the deer had come and eat, eaten it during the night, but. Um, like I said, we hunted for three or four hours and, and really didn't see much of anything. So we decided to pack it in, do a little cooking. Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States. In fact, more skin cancers are diagnosed each year than all other cancers combined. Most skin cancers are caused by too much exposure to the sun. The good news is that you can do a lot to protect yourself. Catch skin cancer early so that it can be treated effectively. Finding it early is the best way to make sure it can be treated with success. Call Grafton Dermatology for a consultation. This is a hat. You can get one anywhere, but today you're in Louisiana. You forgot your favorite one at home, of course, so you got this one and some change. You gave some of that change to the band who got your two left feet to dance, and a few dollars to a man who typed up a poem just for you. You saved the rest for a dozen fresh oysters in a Sazerac, one to feed your face, the other to feed your soul. The hat, it's your new favorite, because today you're in Louisiana. Keep on casting cooking is brought to you by Rouse's. Fresh food, fresh daily. All right guys, we're here at the hunting camp. Got Scott Coyuet. When we're at the camp, one of our favorite things to do is cook, and he's a man that can do it. Yep, the recipe we do in a day, uh, it was taught to me by one of my dad's good friends from Mexico, and my dad dubbed it a Mexican gumbo. We got six slices of bacon. We got a pound of ground meat all today. We got ground buffalo that little bow killed in Kansas. <laughs> We're gonna have two onions chopped up, big pieces, one bell pepper chopped up, pound and a half of smoked sausage, chili, mustard, celery, garlic powder, two cans of uh, kidney beans, one can of pinto beans, two cans of Italian pared tomatoes, can of rotel, and a fourth a cup of lean perrin. Now the first thing we're gonna start off with is gonna be we're gonna brown the bacon down in the pan. And that bacon seems to be the start to a lot of your... Uh, oh yeah, a pound of bacon even starts every meal in the morning, so we good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir it and let it crisp up and then we're gonna put it on the side to drain. We wanna get as much 
Well, not much fat, but some of the fat out of the pot after you finish browning your bacon. All right, guys, now that our bacon's brown, we're gonna take it out. And like, I, like I said before, we, what we wanna do is get not all the fat out, but we're gonna leave this fat in the pot, drown, uh, brown the sausage next, and then, then we're gonna drain the pot, brown the ground, or the buffalo. Okay, guys, now we're gonna set this aside, let it drain a little bit, and then we're going in with our sausage, and we're gonna get it good and brown. And then we're gonna kick the fire back up. So we're gonna brown this down, and then when this is done, we're gonna drain off the excess fat. We're gonna put the buffalo in and brown that, and we're gonna be getting ready to start putting everything together. All right, guys, now the sausage is, is brown. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out, and we're gonna drain the majority of the fat off of it. So, Dr. Bo, you hold on to that, and we're gonna scoop out the sausage. All right. Now that we got all the sausage out, what we're gonna do, what we talked about earlier is the buffalo meat. There's not a lot of fat content in it, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna brown it. We're not gonna drain off the grease, but if you're using ground meat with a 80-20, you know, what we're gonna, you can drain, get the majority out of there, for it, and it'll make its own fat. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try it like this. It's very lean. All right, chop that up and we're gonna turn the fire up a little bit. All right, so after this is brown, we're gonna set that aside. All the meat will go aside and we're gonna start smothering down our vegetables along with the dry ingredients and that'll take about a half hour. So once this is done, we're gonna set it aside, let everything drain and then we'll be good. Buffalo cooked down well. Yeah. There wasn't hardly any fat left in no. it. All right, now let's set this aside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the bell pepper and onion. We're gonna go with the dry mustard, one tablespoon, plus a little more. More or less. Oh yeah, never heard anybody. The celery seeds, we're gonna put a teaspoon in. Chili powder, we're going with three tablespoons. And the garlic powder, we're gonna go with two tablespoons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this down for a half hour and let the, they basically cover it, let it simmer on a low fire till the onions and the bell peppers kind of soften up a little bit. All right guys, now that our vegetables are all simmered down, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add all the liquids, uh, i.e. the tomatoes, uh, the rotel, we're using a can of mild rotel because we've got kids here. Y'all guys who like it spicy, you can bump it up with the hot one. We're gonna do about 16 to 18 ounces of red wine. Uh, don't cook with nothing you won't drink, just remember that. Uh, a fourth of a cup of uh, Worcestershire sauce, or Lee and Perrin, and we're gonna let that cook down for about a half hour. You ready, Bo? Let's do the, you can Let's do the honors with the wine. All right. Whole thing? Whole thing, let it go. Unless you wanna take a sip of it. <laughs> Dude. And we're gonna put about a, a, a Probably about a half, a little bit more than a half of Worcestershire sauce, and we're gonna dump that in. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that cook. We're getting close to the end. We'll let it cook. This cook down for about a half hour. Let it cook a little bit of alcohol out the wine, and we're gonna add our beans and our meat, let it simmer for an hour. And we're good. Okay, guys, we, uh, we, we let everything, after we get all, got all the liquids and everything put in, it's been simmering for about a half hour. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the beans with the liquid, don't drain them, along with all the meat that's been sitting and draining that we browned earlier. So let's get it. So all what right. we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with the beans first. Perfect. And again, don't drain the beans. You want the liquid in there. And now we're gonna go in with the meat. All right, let's hold that. And we're gonna stir everything up and we're gonna turn it to a simmer for about 45 to 50 minutes. You wanna check it occasionally. You don't wanna cook it down, make sure it doesn't come to a ball. You just wanna simmer all the flavors in and don't cook out all the liquid. So all you wanna do is simmer it 45, 50 minutes, stir it occasionally, and you'll be good to go, ready to eat. And it will produce a little bit more liquid, so you wanna just kinda of keep it, like I said, just let it simmer, so. All right, that looks like it. So let's put a partial cover on it. We're gonna turn it to low and we'll let it simmer for, like I said, 45, 50 minutes, stirring occasionally. All right, guys, Bo, it's been about 40 minutes since, since the gumbo's been simmering. So what we gonna do? Think we ready to eat? All right, what man. What you think? Awesome. Let me give you a little bit. Yes, sir. Starving. That's perfect. Now you're forgetting about me, you're not gonna give me a bowl? Thank <laughs> you, sir. Let's try it out, see what we got. 
We got a little Mexican cornbread here with it. Next week we'll show you how to make that. And guys, too, if you want uh, some toppings, you can put in some cheese out, some sour cream, and some chips to go along with the chili and the cornbread. Salud. Good job, brother. Awesome. Cornbread's fantastic, too. Don't get no better than this. That's right, man. Now let's go kill a deer. <laughs> you can find this recipe and more at KeepOnCastingTV.com. Living in the South, we all love our outdoor activities. Most skin cancers are caused by too much exposure to the sun. Also try to avoid direct sunlight between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Remember to wear protective clothing and cover your head. Using sunscreen with an SPF above 15 with reapplication every three to four hours can do wonders. You're smart, have fun, but be safe. Call Grafton Dermatology for a consultation. La Tour Golf Club, the region's leading residential golfing community, is nestled amid beautiful landscaped greens and peaceful lakes. The 18-hole, 72-par course was designed by PGA Tour champion David Toms. Golfers can enjoy the fully stocked golf pro shop, driving range, and putting greens. The family can also enjoy La Tour Bar and Grill, which offers delicious cuisine. The Bayou region's premier golfing community. Live the life with La Tour. Closed captioning provided by Humdinger Lures, the bass catchingest lures on the planet. Saturday evening, we weren't down to our last chance, but it was getting close, so uh, it was time to take a deer if we saw one. We got on the stand about 3.30, and uh, like I said, it was like clockwork. 4.45, 5 o'clock, those does came out, and um, they didn't seem to be that worried. Uh, they, they came up, started eating corn. So when we got back, we started looking at the film and um, of the shot on the doe, and, and Gary was able to slow it down really slow, and it's pretty neat. You could hear the uh, uh, concussion of the gun, and then you actually see the bullet hitting the deer, knocking the deer down, and then skipping twice after it passes through the deer. And that tells you something about these high-powered rifles. Uh, they can go a long way in hunting a pipeline that like that. You need to take every precaution you can because I, I know that bullet skipped and kept on going. So once again, you want to make sure what's behind you, um, who's behind you, and, and be super careful with these high-powered rifles.
We brought her back and when I started cleaning that doe, that was the most fat I've seen on a deer in years. And, and what that tells me is these, these deer have plenty to eat. Uh, they probably uh, had a huge acorn crop this year. I've, I've heard there was a huge acorn crop this year. So they, they ate acorns, they had corn. And, uh, and uh, like I said, that, that's the fattest deer I've seen in a long time, uh, but it'll be good to eat. Well, we're wrapping up deer season. This is the last weekend. Wahoo season's just around the corner. We're gonna get started doing some full-time fishing. So stay tuned for some great episodes. As always, we wanna thank our veterans. Without y'all, we couldn't do what we do here today. And until next time, keep on casting. So Boudreaux, he was driving down the road. Just so happened they had a load of pigs in front of him. One of them fell out the truck. Boudreaux picks him up, puts him in his front seat. Just so happened a cop sees him, pulls him over. He says, Boudreaux, where are you going with that pig? He said, I was gonna bring him home. He said, Boudreaux, I think you ought to bring him to the zoo. Next day, cop sees Boudreaux with the pig in his front seat, pulls him over and says, Boudreaux, I thought I told you to bring that pig to the zoo. Boudreaux says, may I did. He had a blast. Today I'm bringing him to the movies. <laughs> Avec les filles, oui, c'est juste pour moi.